Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids, and this is my backpacking and day hiking survival kit. Now, I wanna to talk to you about this kit and why I chose to build it this way and the gear that's in it. So let's open it up, look at the items, and as I share about the items, I'll also share some of the philosophy about the actual items. Let's start off and talk about the plastic bag. So there's actually two plastic bags, so it's all bagged inside one, and then another plastic bag on top of it. They are Ziploc bags, so they do seal. The reason I chose this for day hiking, backpacking, and just general kind of work in the outdoors is that um, sometimes we can organize our stuff in like a VanQuest um, pouch or maybe like a Roaring Fire pouch. Both great ways to organize your gear, but it adds extra weight. And so for me, as I think about it, if I have this inside a backpack that's already got some internal pockets, it's already safe, it's already organized, I can just keep it in this and I'm gonna reduce the weight. And so for backpacking and day hiking, reducing weight is a significant thing. Now, the other thing you'll see in this kit is that I don't have all the items you would ever need to survive because if I'm out backpacking or day hiking, I've got a bunch of those items already. If I'm day hiking or backpacking, I definitely have a water bladder or nal jeans, so I have a way to carry water. Um, I have, probably have you know a coat or some sort of raincoat, maybe hat, gloves. I'm already prepared, so I'm out there, and these are just the items that I wanna keep in my pack at all times in case things go sideways, so I'm extra prepare, prepared for if I get injured or lost in the woods. All right, my top two items in this kit are right here. I have a mirror for signaling and a whistle for signaling. The reason these are the top two items is because I want to get out of the situation as soon as possible. And so these are a way I can get somebody else's attention, right? This whistle, I'll step back and I'll, uh, I'll blow the whistle. It is like ear piercing loud when you're up close to it. And obviously the, uh, the um, mirror I can use during the day to get someone's attention. Now, there are other items that are very important, but in a real survival situation, my goal is to affect self-rescue. So I wanna get out of the situation, whether it's by somebody coming to help me or you know, I find my way out. So this whistle and this mirror, vital items in a survival kit. Next up after those items are these right here. I've got a Bic lighter with a bunch of duct tape on it. I've got a fire steel and I've got live fire. So these three items for me, are at like the second level of importance and just just barely behind those signaling items. For me, living in New Hampshire, even when it's the summer, if I'm in the mountains, if I'm hiking, generally anywhere, if I'm hiking um, that's got a slight elevation, cold is gonna be a challenge. It can get cold any time of year here. So having a way to make fire is a way to stay alive, right? So what you wanna do is keep your core temperature at a survivable level. And so fire will allow you to do that. So. You can use different items for this. A Bic lighter is a great item. Um, the duct tape is an additional signaling item. It's bright, you can use it to repair things. You can actually use it to help get the fire started. Fire steel, I'll show you how it strike it in one second. And then live fire, I think this is a great, great product. There's lots of other ones out there. I really like Pro Camp, Tech, Pro Camp Tech, but having a way to start fire, and as you can see for me, it's multiple ways. Now you might be like, well, I'd prefer waterproof matches. Cool. This pack, uh, this survival kit is pretty thin once it's all in the bag. And if you get a big, you know, round container with waterproof matches, sometimes it can make it thicker. But having a way to start fire, huge deal in a realistic survival situation. Next up, I've got a Victorinox knife. A lot of people call these just a Swiss Army knife. Um, it's got a couple different blades on it. It's got a, um, a flathead. It's got a smaller flathead. It's got a can opener. It's got a bottle opener. You have a Phillips head here. Now, again, if I'm out hiking, if I'm out in the woods, I may have other gear with me that it would be nice to have a tool so I can repair it. Certainly the knife, great to have a cutting tool when you're out in the woods, but little screwdrivers, little blades, that can help if something on your gear actually breaks. So I think this is a great item to have. You could certainly put a multi-tool in there as well. This thing is more compact. And again, in a realist, realistic survival situation, um, I don't need a million different tools. I don't need a 10 inch blade. I just need something very basic, again, to stay alive so I can get out of that situation. So as far as striking the fire steel, you can use the small blade on this guy. You could use the big blade if you need to. Again, a lot of people are gonna say, well, you don't wanna use your blade because you're gonna dull it. That's true. You could actually use the back of the blade if you bear down enough on it. Um, but yeah, a way to strike your fire steel with this. And then obviously, you know, this is a, an item that's gonna be useful in a variety of ways if you get stuck out in the woods. When that was open before, I didn't show the awl. So that's another tool that's in this Victorinox knife. Just to show you real quick, here's the uh, bottle, opener and, bottle opener and also the uh, flathead screwdriver, but you can get a spark with even that. So 
Definitely can use this to strike your fire steel. Now, some people might say, well, wouldn't you want shelter before you want fire? For me, my thought is if I can get a big enough fire, even if I'm getting rained on, it's nice to have a lot of warmth. I'm wet because the rain's falling on me, but I'm warm. That's going to be a, a little bit more doable than if I'm freezing cold and there's no extra heat coming into me. Not a great situation, but I can struggle to put together some sort of covering if I have a nice fire. So that's a priority for me. But again, just behind that would be some sort of covering. So I have a Mylar blanket in here. Definitely not as durable as a tarp, but lightweight, you can get it covering you. And even if you just throw it over like a blanket and sit like this near the fire so you can absorb some of that heat and keep it trapped in there. Um, I did a video on these, uh, on this type of blanket a handful of years ago. There was a, I think it was a 40 degree temperature difference between outside the blanket and inside the blanket when I measured it. So these definitely retain heat. Lightweight, low cost, maybe three bucks or something. You can pick it up at Walmart. Another great item in a survival kit. Having a flashlight or a headlamp is a huge deal as well. So I have these two items. This is the Through Night Saber. It is a flashlight, but you can see it's got that switchback feature so that you can put it on a hat like so. I do have a rechargeable battery in here as well, um, but you can swap out that battery if it dies and just put in your standard AA battery. So I chose this because if it's a built-in rechargeable, where am I gonna charge that unless I'm like buy a plug of some sort or I got a battery bank with me, that's extra weight. So this way, if this battery dies out, I can boom, just put this one in. And maybe somebody else has a headlamp that's got a couple batteries. We can swap out, we can figure it out so that I can keep this thing going. Um, again, if I'm by myself, I've got a fully charged battery in here and then an extra. This will give you a couple different, couple different outputs. And again, this is a signaling device too in the night to get someone's attention. But being able to get around, some people bank on a fire and they're like, oh, the fire will give me plenty of light. If you've ever been around a fire at night, um, once you get, you know, 15, maybe 10, 15 feet away from the fire, it's pretty dark. So having something else to, uh, to be able to see and to signal to people, that's a huge deal. Compact, lightweight, these go into the kit as well. Just a few more items here. I've got a Sawyer water filter and the straw. Now I chose this other than iodine, instead of iodine tablets, instead of, you know, some way of boiling water. This is the easiest way to do it. This or a life straw would be great. The life straw is pretty big, so it's a little hard. It's impossible to fit in this size bag. The great thing about this is you can take these as two separate items and then basically you just pop this on and then put it into a stream, a pond, whatever, and you can drink straight out of it. Now you might say, yeah, but how are you going to carry it? Well, if I've got water bottles with me, I could literally suck it out of here and spit it into the water bottles. It's gross, but it's still water. Also, I've got these Ziploc bags. If for some chance I got separated from my water bottles or my water bladder, I've got this. There is a system where you can suck this into the suck, you know, scoop water into the Sawyer bag, put this on and then filter it into your, um, your Nalgene's. But again, that's more weight and such. These things are great. I did a survival outing a couple years ago and I brought this and was just like, every time I was really, really thirsty, I would just snag this, go to the stream or go to the pond I was by. I just drink a ton of water. So this is a great, great product. And again, you can just throw this in your pack, this whole system in your pack, and then just let it be. I would not swap this out and bring it to another pack. If that's your survival kit, keep your items in that kit and don't touch it unless you're using them in a survival situation or unless you're checking up on them to see, you know, are they expired? Is there rust? Is the battery still charged? That type of thing. But I love the Sawyer water, water filter. This is really when it comes to a filtration type system, this is my favorite option for the outdoors. Three more items. Let's talk about cordage and here's what I'm going with. And this is going to be 50 meters or 54.6 yards. It is dental floss. Lightweight, extremely strong. Now I'm not going to be rappelling down a mountain in a survival situation in most cases, right? If I'm injured, if I'm lost, I'm going to stay where I am. Or I'm going to be making a safe journey to get out, right? So I don't need this thing to carry a ton of weight. But if I'm setting up that um, Mylar blanket over me, I have to tie something down, stick a rock in the corner, wrap this around, tie it off to a tree. This stuff is super strong. I don't know if you've ever tried to just stand there and like break dental floss, but it's extremely hard to do. Again, compact, lightweight. You can see I'm wearing a Haley Strategic hat here. So Travis Haley, the founder of Haley Strategic, uh, well-known firearms instructor, just a tactical thinker. He was one of the guys I saw, uh, he was the first guy I saw recommend this. And I was like, that is a great idea for something lightweight, but still very usable. Um, yeah, a great source of cordage. Now, last up, I have these two items. This is a Sunbelt chocolate chip, chip granola bar. And then this is a Fruit Strips Stretch Island Black Forest. Um, yeah, a fruit strip, basically. 
Not a ton of calories in these two. This one has 140 and this one has 50, so not even 200 calories. But for me, again, I'm thinking something that fits in there, doesn't add a ton of weight. You could certainly swap this out, put in a cliff bar, or put in a protein bar that's got more oomph. I think that's a great choice. Um, but for me, one of the challenges that I found on the mountain the outdoors is that when you're working on survival skills, even when it's a, a safe like environment when you're doing so, you realize all of a sudden you're out of the, the normal like nine to five environment you're in where it's like three meals a day, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes that can be like, ah, it's weird, man. Like, am I hungry? I don't know if I'm hungry. To have something that's just familiar, like I'm gonna eat some food, that feels great. This may not save your life as far as the, the amount of calories, but to have food in the outdoors is a great idea. I think throwing in a couple sticks of gum could be another great option as well. So this is not the, now I have enough calories to survive there for six months, but it's enough calories to give me a little extra energy and to kind of keep me feeling like, okay, I'm in a situation that feels a little bit familiar when I'm actually in you know a pretty uncomfortable circumstance. So those are the last items. That's the survival kit. Let me give you a little bit more on the philosophy here. So I've talked about weight. Again, you know, sometimes there's the kit you build at home that's really great. And then when you actually put it in your pack, you're like, that takes up a quarter of my pack. And that's like, is that necessary? Do I need those? Do I need all those items? It can make life much more, uh, much easier if you get stuck in a survival situation. But again, if the, the goal is to get out, then the fewest items you need possible is great, uh, is, is a good approach, I would say. Secondly, knowledge weighs nothing, right? So if you know how to use these items well, then all of a sudden you don't need a, a massive slew of items. You can use a handful of items and go, yeah, all these things are providing what I need because I have the knowledge how to use them effectively, right? So remember, it's not enough to just build a kit and throw it in your bag and be like, now I'm safe. Do you know how to use them? Do you know how to use them in a stressful, you know, survival situation? That's a really big question that we have to think about before we go out and uh, potentially put ourselves into a dangerous place. Number three for me is familiarity, right? If you use an item that you're like, I've used this, I've tested it, I'm familiar with it. Even if it's like an eight out of 10 instead of a 10 out of 10 item, being familiar with it is a huge deal. Sometimes people get an item that throw in a kit and they're like, I've never actually tried it. You gotta know what you're doing with the item, right? So it is of zero use if you have it, but don't know how it works. So make sure that if you put items in a survival kit, you make sure to test them. The last thing I'll say is be aware of your environment, right? So I live in New Hampshire. I'm doing a lot of my hiking and adventuring in the Northeast. If I li lived in the desert Southwest, this might change. I might have some different items there because of the environment in which I'm living. There are no massive predators out here. There are black bear and there are moose out here. And there's definitely deer and things like that. But as far as really big, really big um, animals, black bear and moose, both of those are not gonna be a major threat to humans unless you get in a very bad situation, right? Most moose are gonna leave you, most black bear are gonna leave you unless you startle them, you come upon them with, you know, they're, they're young or something like that. So I don't need something that's really geared towards self-protection right now. Again, not that, it's not, a, not that it's a bad thing to bring, but when you have a survival kit, what do you really need based on the environment that you're in? So there's my kit. Let me hear your thoughts. What do you think about this? What would you add? What would you change? What skill set do you feel like, man, looking at that kit, you would say, I need to develop that more. Or would you say, man, you could actually eliminate this item or change this item if Tim, you develop this skill set. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your feedback. All right, guys, thanks as always for checking out the videos here on YouTube. Please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.